Hi, it's been a while since I last uploaded a video, so I wanted to give a channel update. As some of you may know, I am a full-time research scientist, so that has taken up a lot of my time. Additionally, I came to realize that I preferred spending my extra time working on implementing architectures rather than making videos about them, which is even more relevant when chasing the law of diminishing returns. As the underlying architecture becomes more complex, it takes longer to implement. So, to help speed up the workflow of making videos, I decided to give AI speech generation a try. While it's not perfect, I think the flaws are dwarfed by the time saved in recording and editing. While it may seem to be lacking a human touch, rest assured that the same person is writing the content in the background. I'll also still do a few videos now and then, with audio recording, depending on time constraints. Aside from the vocal change, I am probably going to start making videos on a shotgun style where they don't necessarily progress in a series. This will allow me to cover topics that I want to cover, with the hope that they will eventually form a complete coverage when combined. Furthermore, I am planning to focus more on the architecture design aspect rather than experimental results. With that said, I should talk about what's going on in the background. I thought I should share one of the projects I have been working on. While I'm not going to discuss the project itself, some of you may be able to infer what it is. These animations are rasterization tests, taken from PCI traces on a PCI Express-based FPGA. You can see each triangle being drawn pixel by pixel, with the white pixels being a test with fill, and blue pixels being a test with discard. Note that tests that overlap with existing triangles in the buffer are overwritten, so the blue seams between triangles are a result of the overwriting, and not gaps in the meshes. This rasterization engine is highly optimized for the Xilinx 7 series and Ultrascale Plus series FPGAs, and is capable of operating at 210 MHz in the slow corner of the Dash 2 speed grade devices. Xilinx was chosen due to architectural features that allow for more efficient hardware utilization. Unfortunately this does mean that this core will not be portable to a Cyclone 5 or DE10-based FPGA, at least not in a performant way. Right now, it's just the PCIQ, Command Dispatcher, Triangle Setup, Parameter Conversion, and Rasterizer, but those are the components required to get something running. As for future video topics, I may do one covering rasterization techniques and comparing their performance trade-offs in hardware. I am also thinking about doing one on x86 front-end complexity in the context of mid to late 90s era processors. And with that, I'll leave you with one last hint that instead draws each new triangle as a different color from a palette. Thanks for watching.